Greetings. It's another time for our reading from Luther's Small Catechism with Explanation. If you don't have a copy, it will be in the description. Um, we're in the explanation part. And we're on the third article of the Apostles' Creed. We're going to start the third article of the Apostles' Creed. And it's going to be under five, article, five articles uh, this section. I won't get through it all, probably. Um, I'll have to do the other half tomorrow. Uh, but let me read this, and then we'll read the points and get into it. Uh, the third article. Sanctification. Here's the heading. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body in life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified me, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls and gathers and enlightens, sancti sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth, and keeps it with Jesus Christ in one faith, one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all of my sins and the sins of believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. Question 153. What five points is, does this article, the third article of the Apostles' Creed, what five points does this article discuss? One, the Holy Spirit. Two, the church or the communion of saints. Three, the forgiveness of sins. Four, the resurrection of the body. Five, the life everlasting. One, the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit. 154, who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the third person in the Holy Trinity. True God and f with, fa with the Father and the Son. Therefore, not merely the power or energy of God, like the Watchtower likes to say. Matthew 28, 19, Go therefore make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Question 155, How do you know that the Holy Spirit is God? Because the Scriptures clearly call Him God, teaching that, A, the Holy Spirit has divine names, Acts 5, 3 through 4. Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? You have not lied to men, but to God. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Do you not know that you are God's temple, and that the God's Spirit dwells in you? B. The Holy Spirit possesses divine attributes, properties, or characteristics. Psalm 139.7-10 Where shall I go? Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? For if I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utter, uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. Omnipresence. 1 Corinthians 2.10 The Spirit teaches everything, even the depths of God. Omniscience. Hebrews 9.14 Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without blemish to God, Purify our conscience from dead works who serve the living God, eternity. Note, see Matthew 28, 19, for holiness. See, the Holy Spirit does divine works, which only God can do. Genesis 1, 2, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters, creation. Titus 3, 5, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit, sanctification. D, the Holy Spirit receives divine honor and glory. 1 Peter 4, 14, the Spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. The work of the Holy Spirit. Question 156, what is the special work of the Holy Spirit?
The Holy Spirit sanctifies me, makes me holy, by bringing me to faith in Christ, so that I might have the blessings of redemption and lead a godly life. Sanctification in the wide sense. Note, the word sanctification is used in two ways. The wide sense, the whole work of the Holy Spirit. Sorry. Note, the, the word sanctification is used in two ways. One, the wide sense, the whole work of the Holy Spirit, by which he brings us to faith and also enables us to live a godly life. Two, the narrow sense, that part of the Holy Spirit's work by which he directs and empowers the believers to live a godly life. 1 Corinthians 6.11, You were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. Question 157, Why do you need the Holy Spirit to begin and sustain this faith in you? By nature I am spiritually blind, dead, and an enemy of God, as the Scripture teaches. Therefore, I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to Him. 1 Corinthians 2.14 The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are fully to him, and he is not able to understand them because, because they are spiritually discerned. Ephesians 2.1 You were dead in the trespasses and sins. Romans 8, 7, your mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not of the result of works, so that no one may boast. 1 Corinthians 12, 3, no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Question 158, what has the Holy Spirit done to bring you to faith? The Holy Spirit has, quote, has caused, has called me by the gospel, end quote. That is, he has invited me and drawn me by the gospel to partake of the spiritual blessings that are mine in Christ. Romans 1, 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, 2 Thessalonians 2.14, To this he called you through our gospel. Revelation 22.17, The spirit and bride say, Come, and let, us, and let the one who hears come, and let the one who is thirsty come, let the one who desires to take the water of life without price. Bible narratives, invitation to the wedding banquet of the king's son, Matthew 22.1-10, through 10. invitation to the great banquet, Luke fourteen sixteen through 17 How do the scriptures describe the gracious work of the Holy Spirit in you? The scriptures teach that by the gospel, the Holy Spirit, quote, enlightens, enlightened me with his gifts, end quote. That is, he gave me the saving knowledge of Jesus my Savior, so that I might trust, rejoice, and find comfort in him. 1 Peter 2, 9, you were a chosen, chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellency, excellences of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. God has said, let light shine out of darkness, has shone in our, in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 1, 8. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with glory that is inexpressible and filled with glory. You rejoice with joy, sorry, that is inexpressible and filled with glory. Romans fifteen thirteen. May the Lord of God, may the Lord God of hope fill you with all joy, peace, and believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Bible narratives. The Samaritans were filled with, the great, with great joy when Philip preached Christ to them. The jailer at Philippi and his own family were filled with joy because they came to believe. That's Acts 8, 5-8 and Acts 16, 25-34. What, what is this work of the Holy Spirit called?
It is called conversion, being turned, or regeneration, new birth. Psalm 151, or Psalm 51, 13. Get a little more comfortable here. Back's killing me. I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Conversion. John 3, 5 through 6. Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Regeneration. 161. Why do you say that the Holy Spirit has done this by the gospel? The gospel is the means by which the Holy Spirit offers us all the blessings of Christ and creates faith in us. Creates faith in us. Note, the written and spoken word of the gospel and the sacraments are the means of grace. John 17, 20. I do not ask... I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will be, who will believe in me through their word. John seventeen twenty, Romans ten seventeen, faith comes from hearing, and by hearing through the word of Christ. First Corinthians four fifteen, I became your father in, in Christ Jesus through the gospel. First Peter one twenty three, you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of God. Titus 3, 5, He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Baptism. John 20, 22-23, And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Absolution. Matthew 26, 27 through 28, he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is the blood of the covenant. Restatement, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins, Lord's Supper. 162, besides faith, what else does the Holy Spirit create in you by the gospel? Another drink of coffee. Question, besides faith, what else does the Holy Spirit create in you by the gospel? The Holy Spirit sanctifies me in the true faith. That is, by faith he works a renewal of my whole life. In spirit, will, attitude, and desires, so that I now strive to overcome sin and do works. Sanctification in the narrow sense. Psalm 51.10, create in me. A clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Romans 8, 9. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If, in fact, the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. The, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Ephesians 2.10 For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for his good works, or for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Ephesians 5.18-20 Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the, whole, with the Spirit. Address them one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. 163. What are the good what are good works in God's sight? In God's sight, a good work is everything that a child of God does, speaks, or thinks in faith according to the Ten Commandments for the glory of God and for the benefit of his or her neighbor. Hebrews 11.6 Without faith it is impossible to please God. John 15.5 Whoever abides in me, and I in him, uh, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. Matthew 15.9 In vain do they worship me, teaching 
as doctrines the commandments of men. John 14, 15, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. 1 Corinthians 10, 31, Whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do to the glory of God. Galatians 5, 13, Through love, serve one another. Bible narratives, the widow's offering. Mark 12, 41 through 44, the expensive perfume poured on Jesus' head, Mark 14 through 9. Mary and Martha, Luke 10, 38 through 42. Question 164. What does the Scriptures teach about the gift of the Holy Spirit? The Scriptures teach that the Holy Spirit gives gifts to His church. They teach that A, the Holy Spirit through the Word and sacraments really gives freely gives to all Christians the most precious gift, faith in Christ, the forgiveness of sins, and eternal life. B. In apostolic times, the Holy Spirit also gave some Christians the gift to perform miracles and signs and wonders, for example, healing, speaking in tongues, raising the dead. The Scriptures do not teach, however, that God will necessarily give all Christians in every time and place special miraculous gifts. The Holy Spirit bestows His blessings according to His good pleasure. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 12, The signs of a true apostle were performed among you, with utmost patience, with signs and wonders, and mighty works. Ephesians 2, 20-22, You were built on the foundation of, of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus Himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. Bible narrative, special signs connected with apostles personally, Acts 5, 12 through 16, 8, 14 through 19, 19, 11 through 12, uh, and 20, and chapter 27 through 12. Note, in popular English, the word charismatic describes a dynamic person, highly emotional worship, or claims of special miraculous gifts. But the Greek word charisma means simply gift and refers, for example, to Christ's whole work of salvation, Romans 5, 15 through 16, to eternal life, Romans 6, 23, and to being married to a single married or single, 1 Corinthians 7, 7. Finally, what also does the Holy Spirit do for you? The Holy Spirit by the gospel keeps me in the true faith. Ephesians 1, 6. He who begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 1, 5. You who by the power of are being guarded, you who are by God's power are being guarded through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. First Thessalonians two thirteen. The word of God is at work in you believers. One sixty six. Whom else does the Holy Spirit, or sorry, whom else does the Holy Spirit regenerate and renew? The Holy Spirit calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps. It with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. Ephesians 3 6. The Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Question 167. Does the Holy Spirit want to do this in the lives of all people? God the Holy Spirit earnestly wants to convert all people and bring them to salvation through the gospel. Ezekiel 33 verse 11. I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked but that the wicked turn from his way and live. 1 Timothy 2, 4, God desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. 2 Peter 3, 9, The Lord is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Then why are not all people saved? Many reject the word and resist the Holy Spirit. Therefore, they remain in unbelief and under God's judgment by their own fault. Matthew 23, 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often I would have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her 
broad under her wings, and you would not. Acts 7.51 You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit, as your fathers did, so did you. Bible narratives. The invited guests refused to come. Matthew 22, 1 through 10. The guests refused to accept the invitation. Luke 14, 16 through 24. Now, section 2, under section 3, this is bracket 2, the church, the communion of saints. What is the Holy Christian Church? The Holy Christian Church is the communion of saints. You know what, I'm going to stop there because that's halfway through. We'll do this part tomorrow because I'm going to do a reading here soon if I can find it. Yeah, I'm going to do my daily reading. I started on the proper distinction of long gospel. Check that series out. Um,